All right, here we go. Rex Raptor against the Paradox Brothers. This is the last match of round three of the Duelist Kingdom season. And this one should be a good match. Um, Raptor and the Paradox Brothers. I would say that the Paradox Brothers have a bit more strength in their deck with some of their monsters. But Raptor is capable of getting a quick early jump with some of these equipped cards and some of these level four dinosaur monsters like Two-Headed King Rex and Yurubi. <coughs> So let's get into it. We've got Rex Raptors. Is that right? No, that's Paradox Brothers. Paradox Brothers perspective first. And he has drawn a trap hole to begin with the brothers and a dark hole as well. So very good magic and trap combination for an opening turn. And Destroyer Golem has come to the field. Raptor into his draw and two-headed king rex not a bad card now there is a trap hole on the field and the paradox brothers do activate it so raptor drew one of his better cards to attack with on his first turn but he's lost it straight away and plays a monster reborn to get it straight back very very good opening play from raptor he'll be able to destroy the destroyer golem and if you look at the paradox brothers hand they haven't got a monster they can summon both millennium golem and sewage a level six and seven respectively and they do have the paradox brothers do have a dark hole they can play that but it'll be be a heavy loss of a magic card and monster tamer is drawn that is another five star monster and okay the paradox brothers have elected to hold the dark hole that will guarantee a 1600 point damage but rex raptor may also tribute which he doesn't. He summoned Mammoth Graveyard, so it's going to be 2,800 points. However, Dark Hole will be able to take out two of his monsters on next turn, should the Paradox Brothers choose to play it, which I say they would. What you hope for with that play is that Rex Raptor tributes Two-Headed King Rex and plays one of his stronger monsters, and then you play the Dark Hole. All right, there's Wing Guardian, uh, Wing Dragon, Guardian of the Fortress. Dark Hole is played. And now the Paradox Brothers have a 1400 attack on the field. Rex Raptor just played a 1200. And you would think he would probably play his strongest monster. So the Rex Raptor may not have a monster strong enough to get past Wing Dragon Guardian of the Fortress. After he just played Mammoth Graveyard. And that may be so. He has gone with a face down defense. So. Paradox Brothers can summon Millennium Golem here. They've just drawn Guardian of the Labyrinth. That goes face down defense. Paradox Brothers could go for Sewagin. In phase, and we swap the turn back to Rex Raptor. And he'll have to play something pretty soon. He's... Ooh, okay, there's Yurubi. Yurubi will be able to destroy Wing Dragon Guardian of the Fortress, at least. And this will give an advantage, though, back to the Paradox Brothers, because they will be able to tribute and get Millennium Golem onto the field, at least. Okay, there's Skull Guardian. You need Novox's Prayer to summon him. And Guardian of the Labyrinth is tributed, and... Millennium Golem has come to the field. It's a 2,000 and 2,200. Very, very good card in this generation of Yu-Gi-Oh! to have those sorts of stats. And Rex Raptor now without any monsters on the field, and he's staring down a 2,000 attacker, which he's going to have some trouble getting off the field. Face down, spell a trap. And another face down, defense. The good thing for Raptor is the Paradox Brothers don't have any other monsters they can summon. Right. Ugh, right now, there's Sanger of the Thunder. So there's two of the Exodia parts, but you need all of those Exodia... Sorry, I said Exodia, I meant um, Gate Guardian. Um, with the Gate Guardian, you need Suijin, Sanga, and Kazajin all on the field to be able to actually summon it. So Gate Guardian is literally the most impossible monster to summon. At least by today's standards of Yu-Gi-Oh, even back then it was difficult to summon. Okay, good card. Guardian of the Throne Room. That's a... Uh, is that 1650? Yeah, 1650 attack. That's going to be able to get rid of most of Rex Raptor's defences. 
Anthrosaurus is gone, and Millennium Golem will get a direct attack here, and this will take out a good chunk of Raptor's remaining life points. So Rex Raptor needs something, and he needs something quick, otherwise he will lose this first game. And another face down defense, it looks like Rex Raptor may be running out of options. And that is Rock Ogre Grotto. It's only, a, it's only an 800 attack, but the Paradox Brothers have elected to play that in face down defense, which isn't a bad move. 800 life points isn't going to make the difference here. You have that card face down just in case Raptor pulls something out of the bag. It's a good habit as well, especially if the opposing duelist has Mirror Force. Your defense cards won't get destroyed by Mirror Force. We know Rex Raptor didn't have a Mirror Force, but... But with just 2100 life points remaining, the Paradox Brothers don't need to do anything silly here. But it looks like they're going to summon Sanger of the Thunder anyway. Rex Raptor didn't play any monsters down. We will have to assume that he has only got high levels in his hand. He's Sword Arm of Dragon, he's Mega Zowlers, maybe he's Serpent Knight Dragon. Anyway, Sanger of the Thunder will blow away the remainder of Rex Raptor's life points. And let's continue on to match number two. Rex Raptor is going to have to win two in a row to pick up a season point, which is, which is quite a task. All right, we need to reset the lobby back up. Okay. All right, so this time we will look at Rex Raptor's perspective for this duel. And Raptor wins the rock, paper, scissors. He elects to go first. Okay, and here we go. Raptor has got Tomasaurus, Little D, Mega Zowler. He's also got Monster Reborn and a Trap Hole. So, not a bad set of opening cards for Raptor. He can definitely work with that. Paradox Brothers with a face down spell or trap and a face down defense, so no rush from either duelist to attack first. Although Mega Zowler and now Raise Body Heat is available to Rex Raptor. Raise Body Heat will be a 300 point increase for Mega Zowler, putting that at 2100. No, it won't. The Paradox Brothers have flipped up a trap hole on their first turn. Raptor does have a Monster Reborn though, he can play that very similar to the last duel as well. To bring back Mega Zala, and he will still be able to get his Raised Body Heat equipped. Unfortunately for Raptor though, he has had to let go of that Monster Reborn very early, so if he loses Mega Zala, then he's not going to be able to bring anything back. There's Sangan. The Paradox Brothers will be able to pull a card with 1500 or less. And that was a Labyrinth Wall that they have pulled out of their deck. And end phase, let's flip over to the Paradox Brothers. Six cards in hand. And Jirai Gumo, okay. Jirai Gumo will be able to destroy. Oh, okay, Raptor has gone for Trap Hole. Now, with Jirai Gumo, you flip a coin if you attack, and if you call that coin wrong, you will lose half your life points. Jirai Gumo still could have destroyed Mega Zowla and sort of given the advantage back to the Paradox Brothers. So Jirai Gumo, being a 2200 attack and not needing a tribute is very strong, but that half life point I mean, the half life point thing, it's good if you're running out of life points, but if you draw early and you've still got 8,000, you could literally lose 4,000 life points using Jirai Gumo's attack if you call that coin wrong. Anyway, Raptor has got a massive advantage here. He's got two monsters on the field now, Mega Zowler and Little D. The Paradox Brothers have just played Wing Dragon Guardian of the Fortress number two. That'll be able to get rid of Little D at least. 
but it looks like the Paradox Brothers might be struggling with monsters here. And if Raptor's taking them out turn by turn, the Paradox Brothers won't be able to get their tribute summoned down. There's a reliable Guardian, that's a 700 defense increase. Only lasts for one turn though. Megazala destroys and Dragon Guardian of the, Guardian of the Fortress. And the Paradox Brothers still with six cards in hand. Their card count's very good, but card count doesn't mean anything if you haven't got anything good to play. There's a face down defense. And back to Raptor, there's polymerization. Still have nightmares about polymerization for what it did to Mokuba and Panic Steel when it crashed the game after using it. Alright, Barrel Rock is destroyed. So, Raptor not taking any life points at the moment, but he is keeping all of the Paradox Brothers monsters off the field. And the Paradox Brothers will only be able to sustain this for so long before they inevitably will run out of monsters to play. There's Flame Viper. That is part of a fusion material that Raptor has in his fusion deck. He's got Practical and Brachio Raiders in there. Alright, Guardian of the Throne Room is, is destroyed. And just another face down monster slap down from the Paradox Brothers who mustn't have anything else in their hand to play. Oh, there's Trachodon, that's the other um, fusion material. Trachodon and Flame Viper will be able to bring forth Practical. It's a 1900 attack. And remember, back in the early days of Yu-Gi-Oh, special summoning a monster was considered a luxury. You couldn't just do it every turn willingly like you can in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Practical at a 1900 for a fusion, that was also decent back then as well. Right, practical attacks, oh it's a giant soldier of stone. The Paradox Brothers have somehow kept their life points safe. But at this rate it looks like they will lose in a couple of turns unless they pull something big. In their hand, it's possible that they have um, Gate Guardian pieces, Gate Guardian itself, Millennium Golem, there's just another face down. It looks like the Paradox Brothers deck has, has drawn them a bad hand this time. Mystical Space Typhoon now is in waiting. And this time, Raptor elects to attack with Mega Zowler to make it a sure thing. Practical takes off 1900 and the Paradox Brothers will lose if they cannot do anything this turn. And they have gone straight for an end phase without playing anything. So the only assumption is, is that they have all their high level monsters. You know, Monster Tamer, Shadow Ghoul, Wall Shadow, Labyrinth Walls in there as well. Raptor picks up the second match and we are 1-1. We will go to a tiebreaker to determine who picks up this point. We'll flip the perspective back to the Paradox Brothers and let's pull Raptor back into the lobby. Any second, there we go. Okay, Paradox Brothers win the Rock, Paper, Scissors. They elect to go first. And this is all or nothing for Raptor and Paradox Brothers. Winner takes all. Your Gumo is drawn. Along with the thing that hides in the mud, Guardian of the Labyrinth. There is also a Wall Shadow. Is that Wall Shadow or Shadow Ghoul? No, it's uh, Shadow Ghoul. And Gate Guardian itself, which probably isn't going to see legitimate play. There was one duel where we uh, just had a little bit of fun and decided to summon Gate Guardian anyway. Just for fun, but that was a little while ago. Alright, the thing that hides in the mud is attacked and destroyed. Okay, the 
Paradox Brothers do have Jirai Guma, just like they did in the last duel, and this time, is there another trap hole to spring on it this time as well? No, doesn't look like it. Alright, battle phase. Yeah, if the Paradox Brothers attack and they call... If they call this wrong, they're going to lose 4,000 life points. This is a massive risk to take, and it's Tails. The Paradox Brothers have just lost 4,000 life points. It's a heavy loss of points. However, they do have the dominant monster on the field now, the Jirai Gumo, 2200. With two-headed King Rex being at 16. Rex Raptor lost... No, it was 1800 because he has uh, Wasteland on the field. So 400 life points were taken from Raptor in exchange for 4,000. Oh, Soul Exchange. We don't see that card very often, but what Soul Exchange does is the Paradox Brothers can pull... They can use their opponent's monster as a tribute. Oh, there we go, Magic Jammer. I thought there was a little bit of a delay. But Magic Jammer is activated, that will get rid of the effect of Soul Exchange. And luckily for Raptor, because if he didn't have that Magic Jammer on the field, then he was looking at 2,000 points going. And Jirai Gumo has just been tributed in exchange for Millennium Golem. That's not a bad move, because Millennium Golem will get an advantage from Wasteland, making it the same amount of attack as Jirai Gumo. And now you don't need to risk halving your life points to attack. Good play, that was... It was a good move from Raptor though to block Soul Exchange. But it's ended up costing him... Oh, Monster Reborn, that's a good card. Very, very good card. Guardian of the Labyrinth is played now, and with Monster Reborn... Oh, Sword Arm of Dragon. That's going to get an extra 200 as well. That's going to get to 1950. And it looks like this match might be just about done. Raptor, I don't think Raptor has anything with 2000 or higher defense in his deck. And despite losing 4000 life points to begin with, Raptor really is struggling now. He's going to have a very tough time getting any of these monsters off the field. He's only got one card in his hand. He would have to draw a dark hole at this stage. It would have to be Dark Hole or he is going to lose. There is Yurubi again. He does have two of them in his deck. There weren't a lot of dinosaur cards in very early Yu-Gi-Oh! so I had to double up a few of them in Raptor's deck but it's looking like the Paradox Brothers are gonna get the win on this one. Oh, there's Karzajin. There's no good reason to sacrifice both monsters though, though Raptor does go for a tribute. He's going to pull Shadow Ghoul to the field. Now Shadow Ghoul gets 100 points for every monster in the graveyard, so it is now a little bit stronger than Sword Arm of Dragon. Alright, 4000 life points, that's going to be down to 1800 and Raptor in big trouble. He has to pull something out of this turn, otherwise he will lose on the next attack from the Paradox Brothers. And it's a face down defense, that won't be enough. And another face down spell or trap, maybe to try and bluff. But he didn't play it earlier, so. All right, there's Acid Trap Hole. The Paradox Brothers look like they're gonna pick up a win. Two Mouth Dark Ruler is done. And that looks like it'll be it. And it is. Well, a good match between the Paradox Brothers and Rex Raptor. Um, basic Yu-Gi-Oh! at its finest, but the Paradox Brothers are the ones who pick up the win. They pick up the season point, and that concludes round 3 out of 15 for the Duelist Kingdom season. Uh, let's pull up that uh, season 3 uh, third round, so we can have a look at the winners and the losers of this round. And we will also pull up uh, round 4, so we'll be able to see who is playing who throughout the next eight games. So let me just pull that up on my screen as well. So just, I cleaned my laptop a couple of days ago now, things have all moved from where they used to be. 
There it is. Okay, so in round four. Okay, we had Rex Raptor closing out this round, and he will be starting next round against Yugi. We've got Panic and Maya. That should be a good match. We've got Weevil and Mako. Tristan against Bones. Kyber against Pegasus. Nice. That should be a very interesting match. Paradox Brothers against Bakora. That sounds interesting. Joey and Taya. They were the finalists of the Duelist Kingdom Cup. And Bandit Keith against Mokuba, who was surrounded in a bit of controversy yesterday. Everybody's calling out justice for Mokuba. Well, Mokuba, I reckon he could do Bandit Keith in. He's he come close to beating Panic. And he also beat Maya, so you never know. You never know. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate all the comments. I'll do my best to get back to all of them as they all come in as well. Wherever you are in the world, stay safe, take care. Farewell.